Hello friends, in this video, I'm going to talk about the overview of lease creation in Oracle Fusion lease accounting module. So uh, basically, I'm going to talk about uh, all the high level steps that's required for creating a lease in Fusion lease accounting cloud. So we're going to start by creating a lease. So it could be an expense lease for property or an equipment. So uh, I'm going to show you how to go about creating a property lease. And then uh, we've got to create assets for uh, that property lease. And then you create the payment terms. And then you, uh, you create the payment term increases. So basically, if uh, the property lease rent is, let's say, 15,000 per month, over a period of time, let's say initially the lease is created for two years, that will be for a fixed uh, rent of $15,000. But after two years, if there is a um, increase of lease for another term, then what will be the percentage of that increase? That's what you define it over here. Then you create the options and then validate the lease. And in lease validation, the system basically checks uh, all the data entry that we have made, whether it's correct or if at all there are any issues, it's going to give us warning or errors before we correct them. And then we've got to validate again before it goes ahead and uh, sort of uh, okays the validation and hits the status as validated. Then I will generate the payment uh, schedules. We'll have a look at the schedules of the payment and then we'll uh, activate the lease before submitting it for approval. And once the lease gets approved, we'll generate a lease detail report and attach it to the uh, to the lease. Okay, so let's go to Oracle Fusion applications and have a look as to how to go about creating uh, a lease. In fact, before we even we do that, let's go through each of these steps that are listed over here. Uh, I have I have gone, uh, or I will take you through the forms ones so that you get an idea of how Fusion Lease Accounting uh, Cloud incorporates the lease creation and approval. So here I am in Oracle Fusion Lease Accounting Cloud. So before I proceed ahead, I'm going to quickly show you the release and version we are on. So we are on uh, release 13 with a version of 25B, which I believe is the latest at the moment. And 25C will be released very shortly. So um, that is as per my information. Anyway, uh, this is the lease creation form that you have. And here you can uh, search a lease. So I've got a lease that I've already created. So I'm going to start by giving the business unit. So I'm in US1 business unit. I'm going to search it and choose it. And then I'm going to say this is an expense lease and what is the lease number so i have this uh, lease number over here that i previously created i'm going to hit the search button to search the lease and it's going to retrieve the result right at the bottom over here so can you see that and uh, this is a basic view in order to see the detailed view i'm going to come to uh, and hit this lease number so that is how you basically search a lease in order to create a lease, you have to use this button called as plus button, which stands for create a new lease. Okay. Now I'm going to click on this hyperlink for lease number. Okay. By that, we will uh, come to the lease detail form. And here, as you could see, while you're creating the lease, it will ask you which is the business unit, legal entity, uh, lease type, ledger, etc. All these details. So basically, I have created for US1 business unit, which is under US1 legal entity. And this lease I have created is an expense lease for a uh, property. Okay, so basically expense lease is the one uh, in which we will capture the property rent information. And here we have to provide the party name. So from whom we are renting, so which is allied manufacturing over here. And as you could see, the asset type uh, is the property lease. And uh, then, if you come and see, we have to give uh, the term details. So, what's the lease start date, end date, and so on. And, um, and then, 
uh, I have initially given it for two years and then in terms of amortization, so in terms of renewal, another one year. And uh, and and then other document uh, details over here. Okay. So that's the basic lease information. Once you create that and save it, then you can proceed ahead to create the associated assets with the lease. And here um, you have the uh, asset name over here. So this is the asset uh, or uh, the property information. And then you give where it is located. Okay. And the details of this. So this is a location located at com US headquarters and here is uh, the complete address over here. So here you've got to remember that uh, a property definition is probably not required for uh, expense leases for uh, a property that uh, you are uh, renting it or leasing it from an external party. Whereas for revenue leases, got to have the property definition defined in the system. So that's the reason as far as the expense uh, lease is concerned, here you're simply choosing an asset, which is nothing but the uh, property. That's what you're defining it. And it is associated with uh, this party that we have chosen it in the first step, which is nothing but allied manufacturing, okay? And the other uh, information I would like to give is, you see here we have chosen the asset type is property lease, okay? And it's a finance lease. Uh, you can also define an equipment lease, in which case you've got to choose the asset type as equipment lease, okay? And then under asset definition, you will have uh, a place to choose the equipment, which is nothing but, you know, item number. That must be defined in the system, particularly in inventory or PIM modules. And that's, uh, and only after that, it will be appearing over here. And there are specific setups to do that which i will be explaining you subsequently as a part of this course anyway that's just a uh, higher up uh, information or sort of an overview so as you could see uh, the location information i have defined over here and here i've given the asset uh, asset start date and end date and amortization uh, date or something like a renewal date okay and uh, the location is very important so you've got to give the location and from the location it's going to fetch the complete information automatically then you've got something like milestone over here so milestone could be you may want to define some something like an exit expiry date in which case you know uh, a a notice will be uh, you can define a first notice date in which a notice will be sent and to whom uh, it should be sent and what should be the milestone status Okay, this is additional information. You can define it with uh, an asset. And again, this is optional. Okay, something similar to that, you can define milestone information for a revenue lease as well, uh, for equipment or for a property. All right. So we talked about a couple of things over here. So you can define a, uh, a property lease. And uh, that is for a specific property associated with a party you can also define a revenue lease in which case you are or your company is leasing a property to someone else outside uh, outside your organization okay that's where the revenue lease for a property comes into picture then you've got an equipment lease an expense lease for equipment or items okay so three times for types of uh, leases you can define it and now you've got like payments so by payments you've got something like payment schedule you've got to define it okay so here you give the number payment purpose is nothing but the rent and what is the payment uh, type so it could be base rent and then you know if if the property owner is charging extra uh, extra for say parking or electricity or for watchmen or so on that you can define it over here okay and as you could see payment template you have chosen as property lease and that has to be predefined and asset number is coming from the asset that you defined over here then start date end date which ideally should be equal to the dates that you define it in the uh, initial section for the 
uh, property lease currency payment uh, status and what should be the uh, frequency of the payment it is monthly so obviously we'll pay rent on a monthly basis but some places it could be a fortnightly or a weekly basis then who is the supplier and, and which is the supplier side okay so that information you define it over here and you see the summary of the payment uh, would be displayed over here as well okay and as you could see uh, you you can have a payment schedule so basically payment schedule you can you generate it uh, at a later stage so here you see the line types recurring number of payment 24 payments because it's a 24 months lease and what is the amount of uh, um, rent that you've got to pay is 9500 start date and date and what is the first payment due date which is this month okay so uh, then you've got options in options you can define um, and sort of an uh, extension of the property lease okay so as you could see here uh, property lease is going to end on year 27 june and then this is an extension you have defined it from the, uh, 27 or 2027 year to 2028 okay and then if at all uh, there are any rent increase then you define it so you see the payment purpose is rent and option type is renewal so extension or renewal uh, is an option and uh, then again you define the rent over here so rent amount is ten thousand in this case so rent has increased something like that okay and the associated accounting information would be captured over here from the ledger again all these things are dependent setups of uh, uh, lease accounting cloud so you've got to define the legal entity the ledger uh, the chart of accounts uh, and calendar and so on in the uh, gl and taxation for taxes and uh, payment information in uh, the payables module and so on so once you have all that defined only then you can start setting up the lease accounting module okay then write in obligations and then you've got milestones uh, these are all optional okay then validation so once you've defined all this information the asset uh, um, asset detail or, or property de uh, sorry the lease detail asset detail the payment detail and options then you have got to validate the lease once you validate the lease and you get no errors then the system lets you uh, change the status to uh, active so basically you activate the lease and uh, if at all you have set up approval for lease which ideally would be there then you've got to submit this lease for approval okay once the lease uh, is approved then you can uh, then the lease is ready uh, and then you can uh, issue the first payment on the due date in the schedule basically it shows the schedule of uh, the lease which includes the payment schedule okay so as you see this is the file if you open it you will see details of the schedule so we'll just uh, open this so this is the lease detail report under which it will show you all the details of uh, the lease that you have just defined so this is basically coming from the header which includes the business unit the legal entity ledger lease number lease name start date and date amortization date and so on and lease term okay then payment and options and amortization by currents currency so basically uh, lease accounting is also enabled for accounting standards such as esc 842 and uh, ifrs 16 uh, okay so it complies with those standards and uh, uh, you can see the details according to each of these standards and you see that uh, the uh, payment amount is uh, clearly displayed over here and if at all there is a previous liability for this uh, supplier then that is shown over here and it will be added on to okay and all the details are shown over here which is quite interesting i'm going to um, explain you each of these details as we go along further in this course so that is basically the initial um, uh, lease detail report and here you've got uh, the payment amortization information the payment schedule for the lease 
as you could see okay individual payments are also shown over here when uh, is the liability started and when is the end date or uh, due date okay and it will also contains the present value of the lease and what is the opening liability uh, if at all there are any previously amount due and any exempt payment schedule are also shown over here okay so i'm going to go back so uh, that was the lease details report and that you generate after activating the lease and then you have you see this information of uh, Furthermore, information according to individual uh, accounting standards. Okay, that you can see it was also a part of the lease details report and it has been, been basically summarized over here. Okay, then any attachments you can always attach something, something like if it are paper copies of the lease that you can attach it over here, which is signed by both the parties. Any history of uh, the information, uh, for example, when, uh, when the lease was booked. So basically it is showing over here, if at all there was any amendment to the lease, then it will be shown over here uh, and so on with, if at all there are any amendment, this version number will increase from 1 to say 1.1 or 2 and so on. So basically this is how you create a lease and uh, then you define the associated lease information, um, including the payment schedules, options, any uh, any rights and obligations and milestones and validated then get it approved so this is all for property uh, lease and uh, which is of expense type and the similar setup or similar way to create uh, lease for uh, revenue lease for property as well as uh, expense lease for equipment